In northwestern Costa Rica, something really strange happened in the late 1990s. A local orange juice company dumped loads of orange peels, we're talking around a thousand truckloads, onto a patch of exhausted, sun-scorched pasture land inside a national park. It sounded very much like pollution. There were lots of complaints and even a lawsuit. Soon after, the project shut down and it was quickly forgotten. For the next 16 years, nobody really paid attention to the piece of land with all the orange waste. But years later, a team of scientists returned to the park, and what they saw left them absolutely stunned. The barren field became a thriving forest. What initially looked like an environmental hazard turned out to be one of the most amazing ecological transformations the world has ever seen. But how did any of that happen? Let's backtrack a bit. Long before orange peels came into the scene, the land was in trouble. In northwestern Costa Rica, there's a place called the Area de Conservación Guanacaste ACG. It's a brilliant national park, popular for its amazing biodiversity. But not all the parts of the park were wonderful back then. Many years ago, large portions of the park's land were converted into pastures for cattle. However, the grasslands quickly became overgrazed. Additionally, the soil became weak and the trees slowly disappeared too. The only thing left was dry, compacted earth that barely anything could grow from. Reforesting land like that was going to be pretty expensive, time-consuming, and basically impractical on a large scale. Well, there was a silver lining. Two prominent ecologists entered the scene, Daniel Jansen and Winnie Halwachs, a married couple affiliated with the University of Pennsylvania. The pair spent years advising Costa Rican conservation efforts and were really invested in restoring ACG, but they also knew that if restoration efforts were going to last in the long run, they needed bold, low-cost solutions. That's when opportunity arrived. Lots of it. Not far from the park, a new orange juice company named Del Oro S.A. had recently started operating in the region. And as we all know, making orange juice comes with a whole lot of waste. Every day, Del Oro processes thousands of oranges. There were loads of leftover peels and pulp, and the company needed a way to get rid of their waste. Consequently, Jansen and Halwax came up with an idea. What if the orange waste could be used to restore the land? Following their idea, in 1996, they brokered a deal. Del Oro would be able to dump its orange waste on a three-hectare stretch of degraded land inside the ACG. The project was a sort of environmental give-and-take, a conservation strategy that both sides would gain from. The company could get rid of its waste without the usual landfill costs or other similar fees, while the park would also gain organic matter to enrich the soil. To Jansen and Halwax, this plan was a completely logical and even elegant solution. Instead of paying for fertilizers or planting expensive seedlings, they could use orange waste. To them, the orange peels would keep invasive grass away and eventually break down into rich compost. Frankly, the scale of the idea was as ambitious as it was absurd. This wasn't just a compost heap, it was an ecological experiment, one rooted in not just science but also in faith. It was based on the idea that even the most damaged ecosystems heal themselves if they get the right kind of help. The only catch is that it would take time and a whole lot of oranges. So the experiment officially started in 1996, and by 1997 it was already running. Del Oro started bringing in truckloads of orange waste, mostly peels and pulp, to the site in the Area de Conservación Guanacaste. Over a year, about 12,000 metric tons of waste were dumped on three hectares of pasture with poor nutrients. That's roughly the weight of 2,000 adult elephants. Anyways, the peels were spread in thick, uneven layers. To the untrained eye, it looked kind of like industrial dumping. There were no signs, no fences, not even fancy equipment. It was just bright orange mounds slowly rotting away in the heat. The waste fermented, and as it did, it emitted a strong citrus odor that mixed with the wind. Flies soon swarmed the site as insects and fungi began breaking it down almost immediately. At the beginning, the team was hopeful. They strongly believed the decomposition would happen naturally and that the chaos of rotting fruit was just the beginning of something better. However, reality hit much harder than any of them expected. While the idea made sense on paper, putting it into practice 
was an issue. Farmers and townspeople complained bitterly about the smell and mess. Some believed it was pollution. Others were worried that the waste would soon contaminate local water or bring weird diseases. Basically, people were not happy about how the orange dump was turning out. But the fiercest opposition emerged from quite a surprising place. It was from Del Oro's biggest competitor, a rival juice company called Tico Fruit. The company filed a lawsuit and accused Del Oro of defiling a protected ecosystem. They also accused their rivals of violating national regulations. It wasn't just about the environment, it was more about competition. Del Oro got a free waste disposal solution and good press from its donation to the park. Tico Fruit hadn't. Undoubtedly, tensions rose, media attention grew, and environmental agencies were pressured to get involved. What started as a quiet experiment had now become the center of a national controversy. The controversy even drew public scrutiny and led to a formal court case in Costa Rica with a legal battle that escalated really fast. By 1998, just a year after the dumping began, the case reached a court in Costa Rica. The court ruled in favor of the opposition and ordered Del Oro to stop the project immediately. And just like that, the experiment was over. No more peels were delivered. Over time, the site was left unchecked and no longer marked. The rotting mounds of orange waste were left to decompose by themselves at the mercy of the elements. And as quickly as it started, the world moved on. A lot of people saw the project as a failed stunt, an embarrassing mess tucked away in a forgotten corner of a national park. Many dismissed the project as a failed experiment, and the site faded from public and scientific attention. No additional research was done, no one came back to check the site. Even the ecologists who had big dreams for it moved on to other projects. After the legal shutdown, the site received little attention and was left to decompose, naturally, for years. But underneath that decaying fruit, something was stirring. As the orange peels broke down, they quietly laid the foundation for a transformation no one expected. For more than 15 years, the orange peel site lay untouched. No more trucks came by dumping peels. No formal scientific monitoring took place. The site barely got any attention, and the public forgot about it. However, in 2013, a Princeton University graduate student, Timothy Truer, carried out research on forest restoration in tropical regions. During his review of past projects, he found an old academic paper written by Daniel Jansen and Winnie Halwax, the very same ecologists who championed the orange peel dumping project. The paper only briefly mentioned the experiment, noting that no one had revisited the site since the project stopped. That tiny detail caught Truer's attention. Could something meaningful have happened at the site after all those years? He reached out to Jansen and Halwax, who were still active in Costa Rica, and together they made the decision to track down the old dumping ground. Surprisingly, finding it was incredibly more difficult than any of them expected. The original signs and landmarks were gone. The landscape had shifted. Dry, degraded pasture became totally unrecognizable. Locating the site was a challenge, but they eventually found what they were looking for, and what they saw left them utterly stunned. The site wasn't just covered in grass, it went through a complete transformation. Towering trees stood where sun-baked pastures once lay. Thick vines coiled around trunks like snakes. The forest floor was lush and green. Insects buzzed, birds flew. One could say that the scene was something out of a movie. The extent of regrowth and ecological recovery was surprising, to say the least. To properly understand how much of a transformation took place, Truer launched a formal ecological study. He and his team set up side-by-side -side comparisons between the site with the dumped orange peels and a control plot nearby. The differences were absolutely dramatic. The treated area was seen to have significantly more biomass. Simply put, more trees, shrubs, and ground cover. Tree species richness was notably higher, too. In 2017, Timothy Truer and his team published a study in the journal Restoration Ecology, revealing that the area treated with orange waste showed a 176% increase in above-ground biomass compared to the nearby control plot. That's nearly three times more plant growth. And it happened without any irrigation, planting, or follow-up maintenance over the 16-year period. The conclusion was 
obviously clear. The orange peels had started a powerful process of natural ecological succession by suffocating aggressive grasses, nourishing soil microbes, and returning vital nutrients to the earth, the dumped peels brought the perfect conditions for the tropical forest to grow. And strangely, until Truer's rediscovery, nobody noticed a thing. What happened in that forgotten patch was truly impressive. The soil of the orange dumping patch got better too. Many years after the orange waste dumping, it contained much higher levels of essential nutrients. Elements like nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon are very necessary for plants to grow, and they are now adequately present in the soil. So the decomposed orange matter positively helped the soil more than anyone imagined. It brought a rich, fertile foundation that aided long-term recovery. But maybe the most amazing part was how this whole process changed the ecosystem. At first, the thick layer of orange peels covered up the fast-growing grasses that usually take over damaged land. Now that competition was suppressed, native species had a chance to come back. Although the exact methods behind the regeneration weren't studied in detail, researchers think it's possible that the regrowth happened because of a combination of buried seeds, animal dispersal, and improved soil conditions. As time went on, the once barren pasture became a home to loads of life. Plants, insects, birds, and small mammals were all drawn to the thriving environment. The site was no longer a dreary piece of land. It was now a fully functional ecosystem. And what's truly astonishing is that all of this happened at essentially no cost after the initial waste deposition. The orange peels were a byproduct of juice production, and their disposal at the site didn't need crazy, specialized equipment. Some researchers point to the project as a compelling example of affordable, low-tech carbon sequestration using organic waste. In other words, a method of capturing atmospheric carbon that doesn't need major investments, but saves money by solving a disposal problem. The Costa Rican case shows us that under the right circumstances, waste brings out the unexpected. It was a bold, even accidental success. However, it also makes us ask why the world isn't doing more of it, since it's seemingly quite simple. Why don't we use farm waste to reforest large areas? While it sounds good on paper, Success still depends on a lot of factors to actually make it work. For instance, not all agricultural waste is made equal. Rather than providing nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, some can alter soil pH levels in toxic ways. As a result, using farm waste to rehabilitate land requires a lot of attention, monitoring, and many other variables to fall in line. So it's not some sorcery that can fix decayed land everywhere. Even though what happened in Costa Rica was pretty amazing, not everyone sees it that way. Believe it or not, people still debate the event today. When the experiment first happened, a lot of locals and environmentalists were really concerned about what was going on. The idea of dumping industrial-scale fruit waste inside or near a national park didn't sit well with everyone. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, some people saw it as a type of pollution. To the locals, it probably came off more like a sneaky way for the company to dump waste than anything close to conservation. The smell was awful, flies and bugs showed up in huge numbers, and the giant heaps of rotting orange peels made the place look and smell more like a dump than a science project. People judged it based on what they saw and smelled, and let's just say it didn't leave a great impression. As a result, it was no surprise that the unpleasant smell and appearance led to some local opposition and skepticism. Apart from how the public took the issue, there was also a significant legal backlash. Tico Fruit, a major competitor of the juice company Del Oro, filed a formal complaint. They argued that the dumping of orange peels on public conservation land violated Costa Rica's environmental protection laws. According to Tico Fruit, Del Oro was exploiting a public resource under the guise of philanthropy while benefiting from free waste disposal. And in 1998, when the court ruled against the project, it was forced to end. Who knows how the experiment would have turned out if the court had allowed it to continue? 
Even today, despite the incredible results revealed years later, scientists are still careful. While the transformation was visually and ecologically dramatic, the project wasn't very thorough, nor was it controlled. It was simply a one-time site-specific intervention. It wasn't recreated elsewhere with different organic materials. That clearly means it's not certain that what happened in Costa Rica would happen anywhere else. Truthfully, the way nature reacts to waste products can't be determined. If you dump too much citrus waste or dump waste too often, the soil becomes too acidic. That can mess with the microbes in the soil and stop some plants from growing. So instead of helping, it actually makes things worse. That's why people with environmental and ecological knowledge always warn that it's not a one-size-fits-all strategy. Despite all the problems and concerns, this waste dumping project really makes us reconsider what we think is possible. Around the world, some governments and environmental agencies are under pressure to restore land. At the same time, food and agricultural industries produce mountains of organic waste each year, and a lot of it is discarded burned or left to rot. Costa Rica's orange peel experiment is a powerful case study in reimagining organic waste. Sometimes nature just needs a little nudge. And the story doesn't quite stop there. Inspired by the orange peel results, other researchers have begun testing similar low-tech restoration hacks. In 2021, a team from the University of Hawaii covered degraded pasture in Costa Rica with a thick layer of discarded coffee pulp, another agricultural byproduct that normally rots in piles. Within just two years, tree cover on the treated plot jumped to 80% compared to 20% in the control area. The invasive African grass was gone, soil nutrients were up, and native saplings shot to heights of 15 feet. These experiments hint at a bigger future where farm waste isn't just a disposal problem, it's a restoration tool. But they also come with a note of caution. Success depends on local climate, soil chemistry, and careful planning to avoid pests or pollution. Still, the idea is powerful. Imagine a world where citrus rinds, coffee pulp, and other organic leftovers quietly transform exhausted land into thriving forests, locking away carbon, boosting biodiversity, and giving nature that nudge it sometimes needs. If orange peels could spark a miracle in Costa Rica, maybe our waste holds more potential than we've ever dared to imagine. And perhaps most importantly, it leaves us with a serious question. If organic waste can grow a forest, what else are we wasting? It's amazing that it all started as a messy, controversial dump of waste, proof that when nature is given the right tools, even discarded scraps can bring the unexpected to life. If you have any questions on the dumping project that took place, leave them in the comment section. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more updates like these. Thanks for watching.